what have we here? Oh my, oh my. Well, you, my friend, um, you've stumbled upon the internet's dirty little secret. The Greatacular, Sharktacular, Clark the Shark Show. Greatacular, I, I mean, it, it's so great, it's spectacular, it's greatacular. Clark the Shark Talk Radio on the Golden EIB Sharkerphone at one 800 4492 It's not a microphone, baby, because I'm talking about Zebra, the debut album from 1983 that I listened to around Torrance and Redondo Beach at South High, maybe El Camino College in Torrance. I, I'm, I can't remember, you guys, but I do remember zebra <laughs> phenomenal like um band that was here and gone uh now i know they went on and existed uh but i quickly lost interest in them after this album somebody said to me once that they have other great music after this album um, they may or may not, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember, but man, do I remember this album, this debut. Uh, you know, they sound so Canadian, like they're from Toronto, but these guys are from like, uh, I don't know, somewhere in America, maybe Louisiana or Texas or Arkansas or uh, Alabama or Florida or something. I don't know where. I don't really read the Wikipedias. I go by my memories of the band and the music from way long ago, uh, usually at uh, the era where I was at South Torrance High School from 1979 until 1983 and uh, there was a bunch of, um, douchebags I, I hung out with, um, circa 1982, 83, 84 down at El Retiro Park. And, um, oh, you know, I would be in and out of the inner circle of the, the like five or six douchebags. I think at one point I was cast out. Uh, but then I was cast back in somehow when Zebra was around. And um, I just remember thinking that this was the greatest album I ever heard uh, when I heard this. A little bit Triumph, uh, you know, like Magic Power, like uh, Allied Forces type of stuff. Um and a little bit, you know, like many three-piece bands thing, uh, you know, Cream, the James Gang, Rush, uh, the Jimi Hendrix, Hendrix Experience, um, Blue Cheer and all that. I love three-piece bands, so I had to investigate this zebra band. <laughs> I had to me Clark the shark and um, yeah, these guys li lived up to all my expectations and even more and way beyond zebra. Um, at the time in 1983, I thought this was like a, uh, my favorite album or something like, and me, Clark, the shark, I was hardcore into punk rock, you know, black flag and all that stuff. And yet I still appreciated all music of all styles, all kinds, you know, the doors, uh, the Beatles, the stones, um, uh, 
to the Sex Pistols, to the Damned, to Frank Zappa, to Patsy Cline, to, uh, you know, Hank Williams, to uh, Roy Orbison, to Tammy Wynette, to uh, the Standells, the Music Machine, and uh, the Electric Prunes, and Eric Burden, and the Animals, and beyond. I loved everything. I loved music, you guys. I wasn't just some guy into punk rock. I uh, never wanted to be like that, nor was I a guy just into heavy metal or hard rock. Didn't want to be one of those either. My record uh, collection of vinyls was schizophrenic in Torrance and Redondo Beach. And, uh, you know, people just thought I was weird. But, uh, you know, today I'm finding out that there were and still are a hell of a lot of people just like me. They like everything. But in 1983, when Zebra was around, you couldn't readily admit that because in the South Bay, Torrance, Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach, I was very concerned and worried what my punk rock friends uh, thought or felt at the same time, I was worried what my heavy metal friends and Iron Maiden would think. And then pretty soon I would just give up and be like, you know what? I don't want to have any friends. I just want to be all alone. And, uh, you know, as best I could, I began to do that or I would just uh, kick it downstairs at 251 Paseo de Gracia in Torrance or Redondo Beach, the Hollywood Riviera, and I would listen to things like Zebra. And I fucking loved it. I knew it was lame, you guys. I knew it was stupid and cheesy and, and fucking retarded, like Toto, you know, like Triumph, you know, like Jefferson Starship or Journey or, you know, Fog Hat or Foreigner. But I didn't care because me, Clark the Shark, I go for quality, you know, great drumming, great guitar, uh, great bass. But there's something about three piece bands where I almost like any three piece band, no matter what. To the point where I, Clark the Shark, in the 80s on the underground punk indie alternative scene, even though it had been done much before and long before me, Clark the Shark, I still felt like I invented the three-piece band. Even though I wasn't even in a band myself yet. Now, I started jamming with a guy named Steve Stepanian who lived down uh, at Knob Hill and PCH about 1984-85 era. I don't know if he lived there yet. He lived over near Prospect Avenue and uh, maybe Torrance Boulevard or something, or maybe south of that. Uh, but we would jam, and everyone discovered, hey, this Clark the Shark guy is a really good drummer. I never even took any lessons on drums. I think I just bought a book uh, at like Marshall's Music Store in Torrance or somewhere. And there were a few beats in it and I learned how to play them. Uh, but pretty soon all over the South Bay, they were like, uh, Clark the Shark, he's just the greatest drummer. And um, also this thing where I would lead sing from the drums. And there were more than just a few people around the South Bay also saying the fucking guy's an incredible singer. Uh, you know, like I couldn't really describe my voice live. It was very different from my voice in the studio. They were apples to oranges. But um, I've heard people say it's like a combination of Robert Plant, uh, David Bowie, and uh, I don't know, maybe like John Lennon or something. I don't hear that when I hear me sing. I hear something totally original and unique. To me, it doesn't sound like any of those, but that's something like what they say around the South Bay. Uh, and they were always ecstatic and just singing the praises and acclaim of that Clark the Shark drumming. 
And over the years, this began to become a ring around my neck, where everywhere I went, they would say, oh, here comes that great drummer, Clark the Shark. He, he's so amazing. And this was a real point and source of frustration for me, Clark the Shark, because I considered myself, believe it or not, a guitarist, and in particular, a lead guitarist. Uh, I had been playing guitar since I was about nine years old. Uh, never played drums till I was maybe 16 or something. Uh, maybe 15, I can't remember, but um, I played guitar and even may have taken a few guitar lessons from the guy at St. Lawrence Martyr Church in Redondo Beach, the band leader there. He would come over to 251 Paseo de Gracia, uh, as is legend now today, and he would teach Clark the Shark guitar, and my mom, Joanne, would pay him like $10 which was a hell a lot of money in like 1975, 76. And I remember he would play Beatles songs in the den where we would do the guitar lesson or the living room. And uh, I just remember playing guitar and, you know, ha always having an acoustic guitar with me, you guys. Uh, long, long before Steve Stepanian or Phil Keegan in the Greenhouse Effect or uh, the Jim Mellon Quartet or any of those bands, there must have been 50 bands in the South Bay I played with on drums. And it seemed like I was at the Hermosa Saloon literally every weekend for like six or seven years. I was always playing gigs there with somebody all the time. Uh, and I also played with a punk group called BPS, Beats Per Second, out in Torrance, or Beats Per Seconds or something, with a guy named Greg Hines, I think his name was, and I would go out there uh, and play in a punk band, you guys. And of course, this other punk band in Torrance with a guy named Legion uh, called Outlash Control that a South Bay Torrance punk rocker named Alan Mulch and I think maybe Jim Moody, these two guys introduced me to Outlash Control. And I would play in that band and many others, you guys. I was involved in so many bands. And I think every once in a while I would show up with a guitar and, uh, you know, people who didn't know me around the South Bay, that was few and far between though, you guys. Everybody knew Clark the Shark at 1-800-449-8255 from the fabulous golden EIB Sharkrophone. Uh, it's not a microphone, you guys, because um, it was given to me by Magic Johnson uh, and Chick Hearn. They both came over to my house one day in Redondo in about 1984 when I was 19, and they proudly presented me with the golden, solid gold, not gold plated Sharkrophone. And I have been using it ever since. And um, I never call it a microphone. If I do, I might PayPal you 24 cents. Uh, so listen carefully to the show, you guys. But anyway, back to the three-piece incredible band, Zebra. I'm just going to say these guys are from Toronto, even though they're not. Maybe Montreal. They might even be from the same neighborhood as Triumph or Getty Lee and Rush. These guys seem so damn Canadian. I swear to God, you guys. But they're not. They're from America. But I'm just going to call them a three-piece band from Toronto. Uh, just for, you know, the sake of argument and debate here on the Clark the Shark show. But anyway, I thought of this as 
my favorite album of all time in 1983 uh, when I heard it before I graduated from South High in Torrance in June of 83. I'm pretty sure this album was already out and I was listening to it and I was raving about it and singing the praises of it to people. And many people were like, oh, Sharky, that sucks. That's so fucking lame. Just more typical garbage that Clark the Shark listens to. But you guys, I swear to God, this fucking album is truly amazing. And uh, it's one of the greatest albums ever recorded in the history of rock. And I must review every song, you guys. Uh, I don't care what the stars say. All music gives it a four. Wow. Melodic, whoever they are, gives it a three and a half. I'm sure Rolling Stone hated this album, you guys. Uh, Randy Jackson on guitar. Man, we all know who he is. Awesome. Felix Hanneman. I'm not sure if he's related to Jeff Hanneman from Slayer, you guys. The bassist. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I love the name Hanneman. It reminds me of uh, s some incredible uh, guitar player. Guy... Gelso, drums, backing vocals, percussion. Three geniuses, you guys, in Zebra, comprising one of the greatest bands of all time. And I'm not even joking. I'm being completely serious. Um, something about this band where they, they have, the, you know, they're a three-piece band, but they're like Triumph or, you know, Rush or you know, cheesy like Toto or Jefferson Starship, but kind of like Triumph. They're heavier and more rocking and kick-ass than, than any of those bands, except for Triumph, you guys. that You know, I get a real Rick Emmett vibe, Gilmore, you know, Rick Levine vibe here, you guys. And tell me what you want. This singer uh, guy also busts into like this Robert Plant screeching high vocal uh vocals plural thing on many songs you guys but tell me what you want awesome awesome incredible three minutes 51 it's a hit song even more than that it's solid great music one more chance of course um that's awesome you guys i'm not wild about their version of slow down um Almost seems like something Rush and Getty Lee might have done uh, as a novelty or they didn't do, but uh, <laughs> I could see Rush playing slow down. I don't know why. I could even see maybe Triumph doing that right here on the Clark, Sh Clark the Shark Show, 1-800-449-8255. But as I said before, awesome. Jackson, uh, incredible. Now, who's behind the door, of course, functions as uh, the greatest zebra song, but it's also one of the greatest songs of rock and kick-ass hard rock. Uh, you might want to call it heavy metal if you want. I don't care. But to me, this is just kick-ass, amazing music that's loud and rocking and melodic as all fuck, you guys. Atmospheric, uh, ambient, uh, polished, not garage. Really 80s sounding kick-ass triumph, but almost like better or something with a Robert Plant infused uh, lead singer with just, I don't know, just this high-pitched, screechy thing implanted, if you will, in his vocal cords. What awesome vocals on here. Who's behind the door? Amazing. One of the greatest rock and roll songs ever recorded in history. Uh, just flat out one of the greatest songs ever recorded, period, in all music. And when you get there, awesome. Uh, every song is on this is it's like it's just as good as who's behind the door. I'm not kidding. Uh, 
Take your fingers from my hair is amazing, you guys. And don't walk away. Um, this uh, track number nine, the La La song, reminds me of Uriah Heep. And I think maybe perhaps this band, Zebra, might be into the, uh, I think, John Lawton era of Uriah Heep. I could be right or wrong there, you guys, but uh, maybe. Um, maybe the David uh, Byron era. I'm not sure, but they're definitely into Rush, Triumph, Cream, The Who, Zeppelin, uh, anything that fucking kicks ass, you guys. Um, maybe even like, uh, you know, Grand Funk Railroad or uh, Fog Hat or some shit, dude, or Foreigner. <laughs> I don't care what they're into, you guys. It's fucking amazing. Every song on the album, the debut by Zebra is in fucking incredible. You guys, this album right here, I want you to go buy it. Uh, and you heard about it right here on the Clark the Shark show. I love this fucking album, and I still do today, you guys. Um... Man, does this bring back memories of the 80s. And it's weird how, kind of like Triumph, it seems like this band disappeared and vanished, even though they didn't. They were still around for a long time, and they might even still be around right now to this very day in 2024, January, you guys. I think today's January 8th. Not sure, but... um if you have a chance to see Zebra, if they are still around, I'm not sure, but if they are, go and see this band live and buy all their music. I got to check out their albums after this album. People tell me that they went on and they remained uh, very good. I heard a song or two by them after this album that I didn't like or something. I just fell in love with this album, you guys, and I couldn't get out of it. And that does happen with me. I will like one particular album, kind of like Allied Forces by Triumph. And then I just love that album, even though I know other Triumph albums. Never Surrender is fucking awesome, you guys. It is, but it is it is no Allied Forces. No way, not even close, but it's really good. But Zebra, there's something to be said for this band, you guys, right here on the fabulous, incredulous, amazing Clark the Shark Show. And if you're only 19 years old here in 2024, and you were born in 2005, four years after 9-11, that day uh, when Mohammed Atta and those terrorists flew those two jets into the World Trade Center Twin Towers. You don't know much. You're only 19. You probably don't know this album by Zebra. You probably don't even remember and or know much about 9-11 either. But you're about to grow up tonight and in this coming week and month after you listen to Zebra. And you tell them you heard it here on the Clark the Shark Show at 1-800-449-8255. The Wolfman Jack on crack, baby. Coming to you live on WABC Radio New York, AM, FM, the big talker. That's right, Zebra. I want you to go get this music on Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, everywhere you can buy music. You make sure you buy some Zebra. And I'm out of here, people. Peace.